Welcome to our presentation on the topic of automatic classification of diabetic foot ulcer images, a transfer learning approach to detect wound macerations. Me and my team were pleased to present our work here at the 19th International Conference on Informatics Management and Technology in Healthcare. So let's dive in. Okay, let's first look at the diabetic foot ulcer. It is a complication of diabetes, which is itself a global health problem with high prevalence, estimated to be around 10% in 2019. Diabetes is associated with severe complications, such as the diabetic foot, and two to 6% of diabetic patients witness the onset of a diabetic foot ulcer. And the diabetic foot is defined by the International Working Group on the diabetic foot. And they say that a diabetic foot ulcer is an infection, ulceration or destruction of tissues of the foot of a person with diabetes. To successfully treat a diabetic foot ulcer, um, we need interdisciplinary teams and they have to communicate and therefore record keeping and sharing information about the patient and his or her wound is important for well coordinated care. So national standards for digital wound documentation have been established in the past and they define meaningful characteristics that are important for planning a wound care. For example, peri wound skin maceration, which I show in a second on an image, indicates delayed healing and is thus an important characteristic to share. However, um, record keeping correlates with, or, or the importance of um, record keeping correlates with the efforts to enter and update information. So, time spent for documentation is not available for patient care. However, wound images are easy to obtain and they lend themselves to be used as a data source for automatic detections through um, statistical models um, like deep neural networks. In the past, there have been um, AI systems, deep neural networks, that try to detect necrotic tissues or infections from diabetic fault ulcer images. And in this concrete study, um, we investigate the capability of um, deep neural networks to automatically classify DFU images with respect to wound macerations. We collected 416 wound images showing one or more diabetic foot ulcer wounds. We annotated the images using bounding boxes to locate where a DFU is in the image. Then we cropped the images using the bounding boxes plus a margin of 75 pixels. And this pre-processing led to 434 images. And then two health professionals classified the images with respect to the maceration status. Here we see on the right wound images that were used to train a deep neural network, a convolutional neural network. We used the mobile net v1 model as the architecture, but we then replaced the top layer of this mobile net model with two fully connected layers and a final sigmoid output layer. And the higher the output score of the final layer, um, the likelier is that the image shows a skin macerations. The final model had around 850,000 parameters and we used pre-trained weights that were based on the ImageNet dataset, which is a large um, database um, used to train the mobile net model to classify images. In the mobile V1 model, we defined a dropout rate of 10% in all layers to avoid overfitting. Furthermore, to control overfitting, we augmented the original image each iteration the model was trained. Here we see the original image with no maceration. Here on the right, we see the augmented image. Um, that means that we, or the data augmentation pipeline we established, shifted, rotated, and edited the brightness of the image randomly to get a slightly different image for the model to train with. 
Here we see an original image showing a maceration and here we see the rotated and sheared image um, that was then presented to the model to learn the features. We divided the data set into a training and a validation set. 326 images that were 75% served as the training set. Um, these images were augmented. The remaining 108 images formed the validation set, which we did not augment. And we see here in the image that um, in the training and in the validation splits, the proportion of macerated and non-macerated images were equal. Here we see the results. We see that the model training showed convergence and we monitored the loss curves um, to see if any overfitting is present. Um, as we can see, there is no overfitting. Uh, the final model yielded an F1 score of 0.71 on the 108 unaugmented validation images. The recall was 0.69 precision, 0.67 accuracy was 0.69 and the AUC value was 0.78. Let's sum up and discuss the results. This study presents a system for classifying macerations in DFU images. The validation showed that among all images for which this system identified a maceration, 67% were correct. That's precision. Among the images showing a maceration, 69% were correctly identified. That's recall. So we see that this system produces some false classifications. However, our examples are in line with similar initiatives like the DFU classification challenge, which reached an F1 score of 0.73 for classifying necrotic tissues and wound infections of DFU images. So we conclude that the validation statistic is promising, but the overall accuracy of 69% is presumably not high enough to use this system in the clinical production. However, the current version can support semi-automatic recording by proposing the maceration status to a physician by pre-entering the information into a digital record and the physician then can accept or decline the proposed information. It's important to discuss context and limits of AI systems. So the context in which this system was trained is that we used images without remaining wound dressings or not remains of cramps and gels. It is important to communicate this to a physician who uses this um, AI system because when he uses an image where creme or gel is present, this may lead again to false classifications. Of course, this study has limitations. Um, we used images from a single DFU center, which, which limits the external validity. Furthermore, we used rather few DFU images for training and we plan to collect more images to improve the system further. And as we said, before this system is implemented, it should be um, validated from an expanded image data set from other clinical centers. So to sum this up, we developed a classification system that showed satisfying validity um, for classifying wound images. However, this system must be further improved um, to support clinicians um, reliably um, and to enable automatic wound documentations. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions.